Thank you so much for staying to this channel. Welcome to another edition of Africa Discourse. I am Wilson on Masha. Today is all about Nigerian Cameroon relation. Yeah, the attack by the Ambazonia militia on uh, uh, Nigeria borders. Yes, uh, Darius Ishaku, the governor of Taraba State, he has complained. He said this thing started since 2019. He complained severely to the military headquarters. He wrote series of letters. Nothing was done until recently when it became too much. He now have to like, you know, write again before something similar started happening after some persons lost their lives. Yes, that is where we are right now. Uh, talking about what is really happening between Nigeria and Cameroon. Some pundits of the opinion that this is not the first time it is happening. Some are saying it's been ongoing. Don't forget the Calabar issue, Bakasi issue and the rest of that. Don't forget also uh, the Hawala Polit now soft targets. Uh, you know, you come to Nigerian border back again to Cameroonian borders and some of the opinion that look this might just be political issues all right the Ambazonian militia that are saying that are not the one that attacked Nigerians it must be the Cameroonian government but the Cameroonian government has said look we are not the one that attacked Nigerian borders we've been able to push them out of our own territory so since they are being pushed towards the Nigerian border they need a place to expand a place to set up camp that is why they're attacking Nigerian borders so out of these two comments or statements which one do you think we should believe and what do you think should happen to really, really nip this in the board or prevent this from happening. Yes, they've been chased out, but will that be the end of the influx of this militia into Nigerian border? Is this a set up? Who do they want to set up? Who is being set up? Is it the militia that has been set up so that Nigerian army will push them back again to Cameroon or decimate them so that Cameroon will have peace of mind? Or the Cameroon government is trying to make Nigerian government hate the decisions, so to speak, for them to be wiped out of the equation? All these are more. We'll take a look at today's installment of Africa Discourse. We're here in the studio. I have a clergyman and, of course, uh, a lecturer uh, in Unibend College of uh, Medical, um, Sciences. Medical Sciences. Just keep forgetting that asset, Medical Sciences. Uh, uh, join me, welcome, Honorable Frank Amigo. I appreciate your comment, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. All right. Anybody so close to him, he is a vibrant youth and entrepreneur. He is in the teaching profession, anything business. He's well grounded. He is a human rights activist. Join me to welcome God sent Aaron. Say, God sent, welcome to Africa This Call. All right, all right. Let me start up from you, Honorable Frank Amigo. This isn't the first time we're hearing about encroachment to Nigerian land by either Cameroonian soldiers or, will I say, the militia. You just name it. Somewhere along the line, there's always this rub off between these two countries. And this time around, Daros complained that, look, since 2019, it's been reported, nothing has been done until some persons lost their lives. That is when uh, the red flag was raised. And that was when the Nigerian military chose to take action. Daro said governors can't do it alone. They're not in charge of the military, not in charge of security, architecture, all this drama that ensued. Because last week in the social media, the mainstream media, it was like on news. What is happening between Nigeria and, of course, Cameroon? What are your thoughts and opinions on this? Yes, there's nothing too worrisome that both parties cannot handle talking about Cameroon and Nigeria, and Nigeria especially. And what, what I'm seeing here is more political than militancy, so to speak. I, I see the FROA, that's the Federal Republic of Ambasodonia, Ambazonia, mm. that they are looking for a, re a, a refuge. They are from the southern part of Cameroon. And the way they are present now, uh, Dr. S uh, Samuel mm. uh, Sako Ekoma, mm. the, the, the way they try to uh, represent the FRA, that is the Federal Republic of uh, Amazonia, is mm. such that they are from the southern part of Cameroon and they have been so oppressed that the relationship between the north and south of Cameroon is not like that we have in Nigeria that the amalgamation that took place uh, between the northern and southern 
not a certain protectorate. protectorate. And uh, that, was, that was a lot to look at in 1914. That that wasn't the relationship they are having in Cameroon. That there's no written statement. In other words, they have been cohabiting. No legal marriage, so to speak. So that they can choose to be out of Cameroon. And in a way, the way they were colonized, the northern part of Cameroon was colonized by the French, while the southern, the British. So you can see it was you know, really be a marriage that would not stand the, the test of time. But that, that, that forms the background. Then over the years, about 60 years now, that they've been trying to live together, and the southern part is feeling oppressed. No development, there's hunger, there's poverty, there's less development in the south. I'm sure that was all led to the incoming of the republic. They are, they are claiming the Ambazonia uh, Republic. So now they came to Nigeria, which uh, they, 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 they border several states from Eboin to Akwaibo, uh, Cross Rivers, Taraba. It was, this is what happened in Taraba, in Taraba. now. In, from Taraba to Bono, they bordered. They have uh, borders all around there. So, but what was worrisome at the moment is the level persons that were killed, including uh, a, a traditional ruler. Traditional ruler. And that one is what made the, the senator representing Taraba South in a, in a person of uh, Senator Emmanuel Bacha. That's his name, Emmanuel Bacha. It is an alarm that if care is not taken, the territorial integrity of Nigeria will be challenged along that line. Mm. So he raised the alarm. And the other senators on ground had to uh, do a minute of silence mm. over the death of those Nigerians. And I, on my own, I applauded it. But what now baffled me now is what Senator Emmanuel Ndome said. Mm. He's from Bono, uh, Bono South. Mm. That what took place in Taraba, and in particular, that, 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 that is a, a Takum local government area mm. in Manga community. Mm. Manga community is inside a Takum local government. Mm. That what happened there well, would have been a tribal conflict or a communal conflict. He mm. tried to trivialize it. Mm. And that is not so far from what we have in Nigeria, whereby a lot of persons were killed at the toll gate, uh, lucky toll gate. The Honorable Minister of Information and Culture said to Nigerians, on five different occasions, that there was no single life lost. No, but he said he said he, he, he never said, said so. That. He did. You know, what he said he said he said there was no there were no proof that uh, life went lost. But now there are proofs. Now there are proofs. Anyway, so, I wasn't surprised. Back to what we yeah, I wasn't about. surprised yes. at what Undume said mm. that it's not beyond communal or tribal conflicts. How would you ridicule people to that extent? But why I'm not so bad at that uh, Nigerian sovereignty is not challenged. Uh, they have the 23 uh, battalion of, of Nigerian army mm. domiciled in Takum local government mm. area. So if it comes to fire for fire, that barracks could, I don't think, be able to handle it. Okay. All right. I will come back to you. Please Thank do. you so much for giving us a solid foundation for this discussion. God said. Yes. A little contrary to what he said. Uh, anyway, for me, it's a little bit of a concern from a particular angle. Mm. Why the Cameroon government may not be responsible for this? Me, I said, you also need to take into cognizance that when people are fighting for survival, like the claim mm. that the separatist group, they will be very strategic. It takes a whole lot of strategy to be a successful criminal. Mm. so to speak. A yeah, whole lot of strategy. Yes, yes. It takes mm. a whole lot of strategic plan. That's mm. the reason when you know much about strategic plan, yes. you will know that success is not something we should be overrating in Nigeria. Mm. Success is easy. Character is where the work is. Mm. You see, but the point is, it takes a whole lot of strategy. Now, this is my point. You could recall that, I think it's um, sometime early this year, in April, if I'm not mistaken, mm. there was like a joint... Uh, coalition brokers between the IPOB and the AMO 
this uh, Amazonia, this yeah. uh, uh, Amazonia, yeah, Amazonia, yeah, yeah. Amazonia, yeah. Amazonia, yeah. Amazonia. You know, th there was a kind of they were trying to forge an alliance mm. in the name that they were struggling or they were fighting for freedom against oppression. Mm. And when people are fighting for freedom, or when people claim that they are fighting for freedom, mm. they could be very strategic. This could be a calculated attempt to awaken a conflict. Remember there was a time there, there was a border conflict between the Cameroon and the Nigeria the government. Nigeria, I think that yes. was under our mm. you know. So this could be a tactic to keep both governments or both countries busy among themselves. While they are debating in Senate and trying to be busy, then they can continue their plan B. Mm. You know, B, that is number one. Mm. So it could be a tactic, like I said. It could be a strategy. But be that as it may be, we need to realize that whether you call it Amazon, uh, Ambazonia. Ab Ambazonia or you call it IPOB, mm. strategic engagement is top on their list. Mm. But again, mm. this is my worry. My worries remain two. Number one, if you look at the interview conducted by a very renowned uh, TV station channels mm. in some mm. last week or so, mm. the governor of Taraba, Isaku, said he actually pre-informed the federal government. Possibly there was intelligent gathering. Mm -hmm. He actually raised an alarm of the need for security mm -hmm. before the ambush, ambush or before the destruction of life and properties. Mm -hmm. And nothing was done. That was when he was asked, what are you doing about it? Then he tactfully dodged it and said, security is not under the poor view of the government. Of the government. Mm. Even though you and I know that the governors are taking huge security votes. Do they control the military? That is another, that is an, you said what? Do they control the military? No, uh, at least. Because they that have, is his main point. He said, look, we do, they, do not control no, the military. No, they don't control the military. I also said the police. And from what he said, but, he said that is a military, uh, I will not put it now, poor view, so to speak. Yes, be that as it may. Yeah. Don't also forget that we have local vigilante groups, mm. which have also been operational. There, there could be some parametry groups that there's a way you could do underground you know mobilization even though i agree that that may not be enough but my point is this there is need for proactiveness my worry is the fact that why do we have to wake up after people have been killed or after situation have gone from bad to worst because knowing fully well that a sitting governor which is the number one security officer of the state have already sent a message ahead Possibly they have gotten some form of intelligent gathering that something like this is going to happen. Yeah. Nothing was done about it until about 10 lives already or 14 thereabouts has been lost. Now that is a worry to me. That's a concern. That means that there is a gap in being proactive in the way we respond and tackle security issues. And for me, that is an issue because we have suffered enough from the hands of insecurity for any... Um, power that be, whether federal government or state government, to have an intelligent report that says there's something that's going to happen and you pay you know, a deaf ear to it, refuse to mobilize until the deeds have been done. That's crying after mercy. But again, there's another area of concern to me, and this is it. Why is it that there's this uprising of separate group, separatist group in Africa? You know, that, that is an issue maybe we should begin to look like, mm -hmm. look at critically. Don't also forget that Africa is not the only continent when you come to individual nation that is multilinguistic in terms of ethnica in nature. There are also Euro countries that have history of different mi major and minor ethnic group trying to come together and form a nation. Mm. So we are not the first continent. Okay. But why is it that gradually, gradually there is already a rising and before we know it, there is already a collaboration, collaboration. which is very deadly. All right. I'll come back to you. Now, when the leader of the Ambazonian uh, group, the militia group, was asked, why did you attack Taraba State and Nigerian border town with Cameroon? He said they were the one that did it. That it was the Cameroonian government that did it because they cannot face two countries that is not in their hands. They have nothing to do with it. They don't have any knowledge about what transpired there. It's the Cameroon government that tried uh -huh. to set them up so that they can be taken out of the equation by the Nigerian military force. Do you see an element of truth in what that man said? Yes, there's, there's, there's an area of truth mm -hmm. in what he said. Because at their level, Southern Cameroon, they are finding it difficult to, to battle down Northern Cameroon. Mm -hmm. 
And because their kind of powers are withered a little bit, that's why they run for refuge. So what uh, Dr. Samir uh, Sako Ikome is saying is Nigerians should grant them refuge. And the host community that you are, you are having your refuge, it is not easily practicable to start fighting them. Meanwhile, your major attack is against the North. So they don't have the military hardware or resources or arms and ammunition to be fighting two countries, so to speak. Mm. So uh, because it, 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 it's a war situation, so, so, to, so to speak, when you're fighting with someone, uh, you don't dictate to the person where and where not to hit you. Mm. So now uh, the Northern Cameroon saw that they have found refuge in uh, parts of Nigeria, not only in Taraba, they littered everywhere. There are about a, a, a million, uh, a million uh, refugees mm. from southern Cameroon, uh, down inside in Nigeria. So it, there's no uh, obvious possibility such that uh, the FRA, Federal Republic of Amazonia, will be fighting the community they are taking refuge in. Mm. So I am of the opinion that is the army of the northern Cameroon, so to speak now, is it Cameroon together, that did that to create uh, a sense of instability in that community such that the Nigerian government will kind of uh, evict the refugees. Hmm. That was the, the first thing they did to the first president. Ekoma is, is the second president. The first president was uh, uh, kind of extradited from Nigeria hmm. and back to Cameroon. Life is, is in the cell now. They say it's a life term sentence. I don't know. So what I see there is they don't create some discomfort for the Amazonia uh, uh, separatists so that the Nigerian government will evict them. Mm. So I, I agree with the president of the FRA that uh, that line of explanation that they weren't the ones that killed about 11. Because if I'm seeking refuge in your home, I should not create problems. Mm. If you have a visitor while you are outside, they say, where's the visitor? says, in your bedroom. There's no visitor that just walk straight to your bedroom. The highest the visitor will go to is the sitting room. Mm. So what I see here is to create more problems for the FRA such that they will have no hiding place anymore. So mm. in all of this, I see that they have a backup. The fear Nigerian government is having is what you said now, is the uh, perceived uh, alliance, alliance with the Apple. Mm. Yeah. But if that becomes a true situation, then they are a threat to our territorial integrity. integrity. Yes, they are All a threat. Right. All right, now that is on one hand. On the other hand, Kumar Kumar said, look, we have no hands in this after being able to chase them away from Cameroon. It's like, you know, my word against your word is a case of like, who stole the meat from the cooking pot? <laughs> <laughs> God sent, in this situation, uh, who are you going to be sent with? He said he believe what the Ambazonians are talking about, that they cannot come distort or destroy the peace of where they're trying to seek refuge, that they didn't do it, but the criminal government that did it. On the other hand, they are saying, we, we are not people that did it after we're able to chase you out of Cameroon. What business do we have with you lurking the borders of Nigeria? So take it up from there. For me, uh, I, I think the issue is not about who did it, you know. Either of the group may be guilty. For, for, for now, is the Cameroonian government group, the North against the South uh, Governing Council, or what mm -hmm. have you, you know, is worth against another. Mm -hmm. But the issue is not about who did it. The issue is that the deed has been done. Mm -hmm. Lives have gone in for it. Mm -hmm. These are people's father, mom and dad. Children have been made orphans. You know, that's my concern. Because for all I care, Winston, politicians in Africa have no boundaries mm. when they want to win a war. Is it genocide? They can go ahead with it. I mean, when it comes to wanting to make sure they suppress an opponent, a perceived opponent, they have no limits. So it could be possible <laughs> that the government have a hand in it. But whoever have a hand in it surely have a strategic plan. They have a plan. They have something they have in mind. They have something they want to achieve. But my concern is for we, as ordinary citizens, mm -hmm. to now be the one that will be donated to the ground. 
as chickens because of either the separatist dream or the government dream, whosoever, is, is an eyesore. It's something that should call all our attention to begin to address the issue of the matter. Mm. The issue is that what is going on with our togetherness? Because don't also forget that if you read a little bit of the history of this violent mm. you know, approach by the separatist group, the Southern West in Cameroon, you, the Anglophone uh, part in mm. particular, you discover that in 2016 or thereabout, there, there was a protest by lawyers, you know, some professionals against the oppression of the minority. I think one time on this forum, we also, we'll talk forum, we also it, talked yeah. about that. You know, so there was a protest, there was a mass protest of the fact that the Anglophone uh, section of the Cameroonians were being oppressed. Just something like the cause that the IPOB are trying to, mm. you know, talk about now. So there was a kind of protest. And for them, they said that some of those people that were involved in the protest mm. were maltreated. Some even lost their life in the process. Mm. Now, it was after then that there was an escalation. I like to address the root of the matter. What brought about this? And what do we do to prevent a possible reoccurrence? Mm. While with people exercising their rights within the ambit of the Constitution to protect peacefully, they are raised unjustly. Now just imagine that if not for the tactics, a reversal of the way that the government of Nigeria came in, and the international community put a whole lot of pressure on the NSAS issue. By now, only God know if you and I would not be right, we wouldn't have been hiding in the bush for safety. Because the youth were desperate. They were ready to die for once. So the approach to protest is another issue I want to call out the, the African government to. Mm. Why is it that when a government in power see any group protesting against them, they become like, for what? Why will he say that? We saw under Donald Trump. We saw that a lot of America, even presently, mass protests against the American government. Of course, we have also seen some pockets of cases of abuse of human rights. And we've also seen how the policemen that have been judged guilty have gone in for it. You know, in the case of the black that was killed, mm. you know, some time back. Yeah. So we begin to ha address the issue. What is the reason for the rise of this? Because the argument is not the solution to the matter. Mm. It means that it's either Nigeria government is going to take up the separatist group, or they are going to take up a fight, possibly, with the uh, Cameroonian government. But the issue is, many children have been made orphan. The issue is, the dreams of many young men have been truncated. So why do we continue to see the minority in a country as people that may not necessarily have a voice? Mm. Why do we think one of the best rules, as far as I'm concerned, that we have had in this country, one of them, even if I share the opinion that it's not really the best, came from the minority group when we had good luck as president. All of right. course, everything is not perfect. It wasn't perfect in his time. All right. Uh, all right. So uh, these are the issues that lead to escalation, escalation. of violence, okay. even though violence is not a tool of performance. All right, Gossens. Uh, you, you just heard on right now. I want to go for a break. We'll return. We will definitely continue with this discussion. Gossens raised a point. Who should Nigerian government pick on? This, should it be uh, the separatist group or any form of major personnel that is not a Nigerian that is fighting in our borders that led to the loss of lives and properties? That is what we'll take a look at next when we return after this break. Thank you so much for staying tuned to this channel. If you just joined us, this is Africa Discuss, and we are taking a look at Nigeria Cameroon relation, the attack on Nigerian border by the Ambazonian. I'm trying to find out ways to really, you know, just. Uh, try to uh, uh, see if this will prevent it from happening again because uh, more than 11, if not uh, less, uh, lives have been lost because of this. Despite the crowd that's in since 2019, according to reporters, now in Nigerian army are beginning to like you know get up and move to that region to see if they can really, really make peace to return.
Now, who do you think that Nigerian military should pick on? Is it the Ambazonia said that they were not the one or anyone that is not a Nigerian army that is in the border that is fully armed to the teeth? Over to you. Yes. Two approaches in one. First is from the perspective of the United Nations, you could accept a refugee. Mm. It's part of their resolutions. Once you belong to the UN, you, you, you should or you can accept refugees. Mm. And in this sense, the uh, Ambazonia uh, are refugees mm. in Nigeria. So if you mm. now want to uh, displace them or extradite them, mm. that will go against the UN's regu uh, regulations and all that. So that's on one side. Then on the other side of it is, can't the Nigerian government, as I earlier said, the, the 23 battalion of Nigerian army is domiciled in Takum local government, where uh, Manga is, where they mm. created this challenge. So why can't they get them together, the Ambazonia uh, uh, separatists, put them in the place, the next day, check the weapons, if at all they have, mm. You can't say you're a refugee and you're carrying an AK-47. Mm -hmm. So it's our duty now, where I see there's a kind of a little bit of threat, let the army go there. Where are the refugees? If you say you're a refugee, these are rules they are to obey. Mm -hmm. You'll be dumb inside in a place where it's uh, where, uh, protected by the Nigerian government, so to speak. Then if you are armed, the Nigerian government can decide on what and what not to do. But if they have not taken inventory in this sense, if the Nigerian government is having refugees and they have not profiled them up to now, it becomes a major challenge. And it's on record that uh, the southern uh, Cameroonians that have formed the separatist group now, they are over a million in Nigeria right now. Mm -hmm. So if these persons are in Nigeria that is even overpopulated, not talk about small, small communities along border towns. Life becomes very unbearable for the natural indigents of these communities. So it's now left for the federal government to profile them properly, disarm them if they are armed. Then if there's any other incursion in any of the communities, the federal government will now be able to pinpoint that it's not from these refugees anymore. Mm. It's from the Cameroonian government. But right now, the federal government is, is not so clear as to how the caliber of people, their personalities of the refugees now. But so far, they are able to identify about 800 of the 1.6 million refugees now. About 800 of them, half of them, have been profiled. So let's know, as a government of Nigeria, the integrity of these refugees. Because once you become a refugee, it's a, it's a responsibility of the host community or host nation to provide food, clothing, and shelter for these refugees. Hmm. So if the Nigerian government is providing these three amenities, food, clothes, and, uh, and, uh, and protection, shelter, yeah. shelter for them, then where did the attack come from? So there are lapses on our part as Nigerians. If the lapses were not there, before there would be a kind of an invasion in a community to kill a traditional head and some other persons, whether old or young, a human being is a human being. So the Nigerian government has, has failed in that duty or responsibility of safeguarding lives and property. Mm. You can't claim whether it came from the separatist group or from the Cameroonian uh, army. Whichever way it came from is a slap on the Nigerian uh, government that they don't care about their own people. And as I, as I said before, for Senator Emmanuel Dume, to claim that it was a tribal or communal conflict, that must should be called to order. Hmm. People were killed. That it, it happened, even in the state, it's from uh, Bornu South. If it happened in your state, does that necessarily translate to what's happening in Taraba State? If there are border towns, of course there will be border towns, and such conflicts arose, then you don't know the two communities that are fighting. Community in Nigeria on Nigeria soil, a community in the Cameroonian soil, that's not the situation now. So what I feel the federal government should do 
in, in summary, is to profile these refugees. All right, profiling these refugees is going to bring a solution to uh, this quagmire. Now, some are saying Nigerian military have been spread too thin. Because um, Ishako gave a kind of a very, very strong, strong allegation against the Nigerian army since 2019. I've been writing, complaining, nothing has been done until the general ruler was killed. And of course, uh, 10 or 11 others, or if not more, and now, that's how people started coming because of the loss of life and want of destruction of properties now. Do you think that this is like a situation? We have an Nigerian army find so difficult to handle in the sense that on one hand they're fighting against Boko Haram, on the other hand against banditry, against the, uh, you know, insurgent, against kidnappers. Uh, uh, thank God that IPOP right now they've been put to check and say they're not going to trouble anybody anymore. That one, let's hope and pray that don't rise up again. Hey, that's from our clash, military. It, it, don't you think it's like too overwhelming for our military to really take care of? Anyway, well, um, I, I want to say that not really. And I also want to say that even though it is quick for the governors to always want to say we are not in charge of police and military, I'm not always quick to fall for that. That's why I'm always quick to tell them if you are not in charge, if you always claim, they are quick to always want to use that as an escape route. While that is true, going by the constitution of Nigeria, we are also aware that a lot of governors have been engaging local vigilante groups to do a kind of check and balances. Let me tell you something, Winston. If you have been looking at our locality... You, hold on, sorry for interjecting. I, if you yes. have a local vigilante group, can they really stand the might against mm. military militia? No, uh, no. I'm, I'm coming, weapons? See, it is not... When you talk about vigilante group, mm. it's not necessarily until the war there's a breakout of war. It is for surveillance, mm. for intelligence, for check and balances. Let me give you a little experience of what we are having with the vigilante group. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that because of this vigilante group in our hinterland, the villages, do you realize that there is a slide down of kidnapping, mm -hmm. especially in my locality? I'm not saying kidnapping is not still going on, mm -hmm. but there's a little slide down because the presence of these vigilantes alone send a message across. Mm -hmm. Put everybody on check. And if the vigilantes have a good rapport with the police and with the military, there is every, um, there's every, um, you know, opportunity that we always get this first-hand information, try to report it to the appropriate quarters. Why they do the little that they can do. So when we talk about having this localized group, it's not necessarily for them to put on the military might and fight. It's for them to be able to abate this situation until it gets out of hand. But again, I want to accuse the Nigerian government of not being proactive enough. This is an issue of lack of proactiveness. Proactiveness or the workload is too much. It's not the workload. It's not. Remember, a uh, doctor was saying that they already have the 23 battalion domicile around that vicinity. But you need to understand one way the army work. They don't work without an order. It is rare for them to just move and start engaging without getting an order. The order must come from somewhere. So who is the somewhere that this order come to that the state government have been crying out and saying, ah, we have an information about this, and the person kept calm. Have we seen too many people die that we have become callous and sit down in the comfort of our room under an air condition and say we don't care? The highest that will happen is that 20 people will die. Even though it has to do with parents of young Nigerians, maybe if you go to that border, you'll be shocked at how many child of 10, 12, even five years that have automatically become orphans just because of a silence that shouldn't have been. So it's not an issue of overload. It's an issue of lack of sensitivity to the plight of the people. It's an issue of a nation that seems to have become callous to understand that death does not really matter to us. This is not the first time we are having such intelligent reports. We have had issues that have happened even in our own borders where people will tell you that they raised an alarm. There was an information, but no help came. Until they have raided, they have killed. Whatever needs to be done has been done before we gather our siren. And even gather everything and not go there and say, where are they? Where are they? You even go with siren when you are going to fight criminals. You know, you go there and say, hey, where are they? Now, it's a sob. You know, so we have to begin to call our own, the government, to the need to be more responsive enough. Who are the people in charge of this information? Who have Isaka talked to? Who did he tell and did not respond? 
A responsive government should call such an army officer to order and possibly he should face the panel. Mm. We should not just look at the waste of life as normal. I see another 10, 20 people will die. It's a normal thing. We should not see blood until we call Carlos. Have a heart hardened heart to say the words that will happen is blood. That is being callous. There mm. are too many bloods already on this soil. So I cannot imagine as a sitting president or army chief of staff or whosoever that a, governor, a sitting governor of a state is telling me, raising an alarm and saying, hey, we have an intelligence. There's going to be an attack. I do nothing about it. I sit down. I do, did not mobilize my men. They are waiting for the war to start first. Knowing fully well that when the war starts, it is harmless civilians that will go in for it. And that is the case we are faced with. All right. So now it's now an issue of negligence. Issue of negligence? Yes, of course. All right. Now, for what is said, this is uh, an issue of negligence. We're talking about uh, the persons that the matter was reported to by the governor. They should be called to book. Do you share that thought? Uh, uh, you know, bringing them to book because this man said since 2019 I've been shouting, I've been writing, nothing was done about it until some certain persons lost their lives among the, them, a prominent uh, a ruler in that particular border town. Yes, uh, it's quite an unfortunate situation. I'm trying to gather strength to be as emotional as possible. <laughs> uh, no sooner did I want to gather strength that you mm. asked me to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the way I see it, for the governor of Taraba State to, re to have written several letters mm. to no avail, he would have seen something. He has his own uh, security outfit. There's no state in Nigeria that does not have a security outfit. They would have given some intelligence reports to him. Mm. and in assessing or evaluating the report that the best solution would be a military approach. I'm sure he thought he had the advantage of housing the 23 Battalion of the Nigerian Army in his domain. He thought so. So his hope was dashed. That's why he cried out. So even if he didn't go to the Chief of Defense Staff or Chief of Army Staff, with that uh, uh, domicile uh, battalion of Nigeria Army in the, is one of the local government areas in yeah. Taraba State, yeah. one or one, unofficially, would have alerted them. But you should have that uh, privilege yeah. Yeah. before going to Abuja to get uh, signals to take action. He would have also learned from intelligence gathering mm -hmm. that these separatists are well armed. They didn't just come in as civilians. They have been well armed. He said he wrote to the HQ. Yes. Military headquarters. Yes, yes, they would have been well no armed. No well armed. That's why he, he cried out. If they were just pure, by my own qualification, pure refugees mm. with their clothes, uh, one, one, one bunch of plantain, <laughs> trekking on a single file along one path in the bush, it was okay. These ones are refugees. refugees. So he saw the makeup of the separatists and then he raised the alarm and nothing was done about it. So it boils down to outright negligence that lives don't matter don't in matter, Nigeria. Without apology, nobody yeah. cares. Oh, nobody oh, cares. Hold on, life and nobody cares. Nobody cares. Life and as as Nigeria. Nigeria. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Where's the tech not now? That's the reality. I know you're in Nigeria. You didn't come from <laughs> Southern <laughs> uh, Cameroon. <laughs> so I, I, I know clearly <laughs> that for the governor to raise such an alarm, he would have tried to do one or two things. Mm -hmm. And those things would have failed. And uh, more often than not, we raise alarms everywhere, radio and TV, newspapers, on the social media, that what is every governor doing with his security mm -hmm. votes? And here was a case of a man trying to justify the security votes. It was getting from the state. He raised the alarm. There's a security threat in our domain. Hmm. Over and over again, nothing was done about about this. So now uh, we can still write off some governors that they are doing well with their security votes. Here is a case study. But unfortunately, the uh, army uh, headquarters did nothing about it. 
Maybe he didn't root it properly. <laughs> just, just like what the chief of defense star said last week, <laughs> that about the outcome of the of, of the panel in Lagos, mm -hmm. of the toll gate, lucky toll gate, that he didn't root it properly. <laughs> the announcement. Maybe the governor of the Daraba State was also guilty <laughs> of not rooting the le letter appropriately. The governor never said that. No, <laughs> maybe, he just maybe. Procedures, not once, not twice, yeah. once. Maybe he didn't follow due procedure, maybe. <laughs> Let, let, let's be on the side. We always have a defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what, what I see there, in essence, is the federal government. Don't tell me to say it's wrong. The federal government doesn't care about the life of every Nigerian. This is where I put my foot down. <laughs> they care about you the life of every Nigerian. You put your foot down, I put my feet down. <laughs> yeah, I, I put my two feet. Care. You know how many lives have been wasted? <laughs> yes, they one care. life matters. You know, they care. One life. All right, right. Now, now, since this is having the mobilization of the military to that particular yes. area to quell the situation, mm -hmm. they've done that. Some are saying this act is a little too late. Some are saying it's better now than never. How yeah. do you assess this, the intervention of the military? Anyway, life has already gone in for it as usual. I use the word as usual because it's not today we see this film that we are still seeing today. How bandits will enter a school raid for two, three hours. Nobody is aware until they leave before the military comes. So we are used to it, so to speak. But the point I'm trying to raise is that now the military have come in. Now there is a clarion call for us to take the sanctity of the human life more serious. Mm -hmm. Not only as it relates to the Taraba borders between Cameroon, but to the generality of Nigerians and Africa. We must put a little care and concern to the value of life. What is government if there is no security? Mm -hmm. Then we should all start governing ourselves. What is the essence of one billion naira security vote? 600 million, 800 million, when there is no one security. You start to see, uh, we see, there are a lot of questions begging for answers. Is security may, vote meant to be divided between political parties or godfathers or meant to secure the lives of the commoners? What is the whole essence? What is the essence of life? If I can drive out from my house and I'm not even sure that the police on the way cares about my safety. They rather about the hundred naira them and they throw to them. And they the care side. about your safety, please. They yes, care about no, your safety. Uh, you, you see, mm -hmm. I'm asking a question that is begging for answers because mm -hmm. what you are defending is different from the reality we see on the streets. You are talking as if you are not a Nigerian. No, it's still in the studio. So. <laughs> okay, of course, in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, you, but it's different from the reality we see. Mm. Now, we are just using this case as a case study, but we have heard of several cases where governors and other people were telling you I raised an alarm, nothing was done. Even more than 11 lives we're going for it. Going forward, we must begin to take responsibility for the value and for the sanctity of the human life. The Nigerian government must, as a matter of urgency, put a standby 24-hour security on all our borders between Nigeria and Cameroon, knowing fully well that anything could still happen Either of the group may be working on a strategic plan to destabilize one another. And when African leaders, whether as a separatist group or as a government leader's plan, they have no respect for human life. Because I wonder if this was done by the separatist group, what is now the value for the so-called fight of freedom that they are after? If this was done by the government, what is now the value for the so-called human life that they are fighting for? So these are the points. So I think going forward, we must be proactive enough. Mm. We must have our toes on the ground. We must be able to convince the citizenry in all the nation of Africa that we care about their lives. You can't read speech and we see a different thing on the street. And mm. you tell me to believe speech. Is it wow. paper or practical? <laughs> I'm not a lecturer like Doctor. Don, I'm an activist. <laughs> Don, over to you. You're going to have the last line on this discussion. He said, you don't read speech and we see something else happening on the streets. Now, do you see Nigeria placing a sanction on Cameroon? Do you see the relationship between Nigeria and Cameroon going south? Or they can just try to look for a way to go around this briefly? Yes. It Nigeria cannot place any sanction on, on Cameroon because... Nigeria is aware that there's a, uh, there's a challenge in Cameroon. Mm. That is the challenge is coming from the south. That's what they, how they will discuss with Nigerian government. So they, they are not part and parcel of that challenge. Mm. So Nigeria can't place sanctions on on them. 
what they will need to do as, as, as a responsive and a responsible government is to protect their own territorial integrity, to guide and guard against further invasion. Mm. That will help in a way. To guard and guard against yes. further invasion. Yes. All right. Gentlemen, this is going to wrap on this show. I know we have so much to say, but take a look at the time. Our time is up. There'll be time for us to come again to take a look at this same issue if other things arise. Because right now, it's like everything is like calm after the death of uh, those persons uh, in Taraba, uh, uh, border town with Cameroon. Let's see if it's been the first or the last or the beginning of something else. We don't pray that that should happen. Okay? Well, viewers out there. Uh, these are the drug cuttings in this edition of Africa This because I only want to appreciate my panelists. They did wonderful jobs sharing their thoughts and opinions uh, about the relationship between Nigeria and Cameroon, location by the Ambazonia attack on our border, uh, our state of Taraba State. This is not the first time it happened. Uh, before Basak, uh, Bakasi was sent to Cameroon, that seems to be the issue. You know, Cameroonians coming to Nigerian border town, according to reports, you know, fight here, fight in the military, went to that place to repel them. Is this what we'll be experiencing often than not? Well, we pray against that. And of course, the military and the government of Nigeria should be proactive, according to my analyst. See you tomorrow, God willing, on International Forum. Bye for now.